Hello and welcome to Engineering Ethics at NJIT. I'm your instructor Daniel Estrada and this is the revised welcome video for the fall 2018 semester. Um, in this video I'll be going over uh, what the course is about, uh, giving you a, a sort of overview both into the thematic content of the course but also uh, into the structure of the course. Um, there won't be any lesson material in this video. Um, for that, you want to look to the lecture one video and lesson slides. Um, this is the welcome video um, where I'm just going to basically go over the syllabus um, and talk about some course policies. Uh, you can follow along on the slides in the welcome slides at the top of Moodle. Um, and feel free to ask any questions you have as I go through. I'm going to try to go through this a little bit quick because all the information is available in a lot more detail uh, in the syllabus itself. Um, this is just sort of an overview, a brief introduction. Um, let me start by introducing myself. I'm uh, Daniel Estrada. I have been teaching engineering ethics at NJIT since 2015. Uh, I got my PhD in philosophy from the University of Illinois in 2014, um, and I have a background in computer science, uh, and my research is in artificial intelligence. Uh, I teach a class, a senior seminar, uh, HSS 405 at NJIT uh, on artificial intelligence and autonomy, um, and generally I'm interested in uh, philosophy of technology and the relationship between uh, robots um, AI in, in society. Um, uh, I really enjoy this course. Um, I've had a lot of fun putting it together over the last few years. It's definitely improved since I started teaching the class, uh, and I'm excited to uh, bring the class to you. Um, I hope you enjoy it too. Um, so uh, I know a lot of students come into this class uh, without very high expectations, except that the class will be easy. They expect it to be an easy A. It's a breadth requirement. In fact, this is the only upper division humanities writing requirement that uh, uh, that's required of engineering students at NJIT. Um, uh, when I was hired for this job, my boss uh, told me that uh, for most of the engineers, this will be uh, one of the few opportunities they have for really thinking about what they're doing, uh, and so to take advantage of that opportunity. And, and that's what I want to do uh, with this class. Um, uh, so, uh, and uh, to begin, I want to sort of dispel some myths that students have coming in. So students think it'll be easy, partly because it's an ethics class. Ethics is about right and wrong, and we all learn about the difference between right and wrong in kindergarten, first grade, right, when we're very young. Uh, and um, most students expect that uh, if we're just telling you about what's right and wrong, you know, if we're just telling you to not kill people, to be safe and not kill people, um, well, that's pretty easy. You know how to do that. So most students uh, don't have very high expectations. Uh, if you've uh, had a job, especially like a state job, um, you might also be familiar with uh, employee training sessions where there's usually like a slide deck uh, that you have to go through and sort of click through uh, quickly um, and maybe answer a quiz at the end uh, just to make sure that you're aware of the policies for your company, the policies uh, and regulations that govern uh, maybe the state or the jurisdiction that you're in, um, maybe uh, professional guidelines. Uh, and so on. Um, so uh, I want to just clarify here uh, at the top that that's not what this class is. Um, this class is not just going to be a set of uh, government mandated s slideshows that you're going to have to go through. Um, it's I'm not trying to just simply teach you the difference between right and wrong. Uh, I assume you're all adults and that you understand the difference between right and wrong. Uh, and moreover, I assume that not only you know the difference between right and wrong, but that you uh, would prefer to do right things over wrong things. Um, that you know that some things are very wrong, like you know building unsafe structures that'll kill people. That this is something that you should avoid doing. Um, I assume that everyone here understands that and wants, uh, in general, to do the right thing. So it's not my job to make you want to do the right thing. Um, it's also not my job to teach you my ethical opinions or the ethical opinions of NJIT or of the state of New Jersey or of the United States um, or of your employer, whoever that might end up being. Um, uh, when you get a job, there will be orientation sessions that uh, introduce you to the particular policies and guidelines uh, that your employer and the relevant uh, uh, legal frameworks governing your job. Uh, you'll be introduced to all those things when you, when you are employed. Um, because there's a big diversity of students uh, taking engineering ethics, uh, not just engineers, but um, architecture, architecture students take this class. Um, other students with majors that are not uh, engineering majors take this class. Um, and even within engineering, there's a pretty big, broad diversity. Chemical engineers and mechanical engineers um, are, in some cases, doing very different things. Uh, and it's not the goal of this class to cater to any one particular subfield of engineering, or even to engineering in particular. Um, the class is really designed 
uh, to think more generally about the relationships between the technologies that we build and use and the kinds of societies we want to, we want to develop. Right? So uh, it's not my job to teach you the specific policies of your particular career path. Um, instead, uh, what my goals are is to give you the space and opportunity to think critically about uh, what we're doing when we're engineering, what we're doing when we're building things generally, um, what we're doing as professionals in society, uh, to give you uh, a chance to think about your own career path and your own career goals and how they intersect with your values, with society's values, um, what happens when there's conflicts between these things. Um, and uh, more generally, uh, the idea is to give you a space uh, where you can think about these things where almost nothing is on the line. In particular, no one's lives are on the line. Um, if you make a mistake, um, if, you take a if you take a faulty position in the, in the discussions in this class, um, the worst you're looking at uh, is a bad grade, maybe uh, making someone angry in the discussion forums. Um, but uh, uh, that's uh, a much lower price to pay than uh, building something that uh, possibly puts li lives at, at risk. So the idea is to work out your um, ideas and concepts and uh, to have all the arguments here in the classroom where it's a mostly safe and controlled environment, um, where you're surrounded by peers who are doing the same um, and who are bringing different kinds of perspectives uh, to, the, to the discussion. Um, let me uh, say, let me get back on screen and say this. So uh, I'm a philosophy uh, uh, student. Uh, I've been studying philosophy for a long time. And I know that philosophy is a great privilege. Most of us don't have the time to sort of sit back and stroke our chin and think about what's going on, what we're doing, what uh, our values are, um, and to think at very abstract levels about how our values influence the actions that we take. Um, philosophers do this all the time, but usually philosophy is like the, like the lowest priority thing. There's a lot of other important things to do. Um, engineering students have like physics classes and math classes to take. Um, and then on top of that, there's all the other uh, stuff of life. And usually that stuff of life gets in the way of uh, doing this sort of abstract thinking, just thinking about what we're doing. And uh, NGIT and most engineering schools for a long time now have thought it important to give their engineering students uh, the time and the space to step back from their uh, studies and think more generally about what's going on, what they're, what they're doing, um, what matters to them, and how they plan on acting on those values. Um, so NGIT has decided that it's important that you have this space, and you know I, I, I obviously agree. Uh, and uh, for most of the students in this class, you will never again have an opportunity to just sort of sit back and think about what you're doing, to talk with your peers about your values um, in this kind of controlled environment where nothing is on the line. So uh, some of you might look at the workload for this class and think that it's you know too much work and too much busy work. I um, mean that it's not, uh, it's, it's uh, not the thing you want to do, especially like on a Friday night or whatever. Uh, so um, I understand the uh, frustration with the workload, with all the writing and so on. But I, I really want you to think about this uh, not just in terms of the workload that you're doing this semester, but really in terms of uh, your entire career, how much time you're spending in school and education, and how much time you're going to be spending in your career itself. And to also think about how much of that time will you have a chance to spend thinking about these abstract philosophical issues, like what matters to you. Um, for the most part, these opportunities don't come up. So take advantage of them while you're here. Uh, you're uh, likely paying a lot of money to take this course. So don't, don't waste this uh, opportunity. Um, I, I do believe this course has value if you uh, give it the time uh, to do the work. Um, so please take advantage of the opportunity you have here. Um, OK, uh, let's go back here. OK, so with that sort of little motivational speech, let's get into the structure of the course. So there are 15 lessons. There's 15 weeks in the course, uh, one lesson per week. Um, each lesson consists of a lecture video, um, a set of readings, um, and some other material, maybe some videos. Um, your job for each lesson, your uh, assignment for each lesson, is to watch the lecture video, do the readings, go through the slideshow. Um, uh, there's a quiz you'll have to take. Um, sometimes you have to do a short case study. 
Um, so uh, do those readings in, in preparation for taking the quiz. Um, and then the big part of your assignment, the biggest chunk of your assignment is to write an essay for every lesson. So you're going to have a weekly essay that you're writing, uh, uh, which I'm calling a post. Those posts are posted in the Moodle discussion forums. Um, in addition to your post, I'm asking you that you give uh, two short replies to other students' posts in order to start a little bit of a discussion uh, with your peers. So the idea is that every Friday night at midnight, so Friday going into Saturday, at Friday at 11.59 p.m., um, you have oops, sorry, you have this quiz due and you have the discussion forum post due. So the post should be about 500 words or five minutes of video. If you uh, don't like writing essays and you'd rather record a video of yourself, a video essay, um, that's fine. Uh, we'll talk about the requirements for this in a little bit. But about 500 words or five minutes of video for your post. Um, the post should discuss some of the readings and some of the themes for that lesson, uh, which I go over in the lecture video in the slides. Um, in addition to the post, you also have to do your quiz by Friday at midnight. And those are regular assignments due every Friday at midnight. Um, in addition, you have to do replies, which are responses to other students' posts. Um, these are about paragraph length, 150 words or so. Um, and those are due the following Tuesday. So your lesson one post will be due on Friday, and then your replies for lesson one will be due the following Tuesday. Um, uh, there's a lot of reading for, the, for this class, um, but there's only one required book, which is this book up here, this Martin Inchinsinger, um, Engineering Ethics, I mean, sorry, Ethics and Engineering. Um, it should be the fourth edition of the text. Uh, there will be quizzes and assignments that refer to page numbers in the fourth edition. So if you have something other than the fourth edition, uh, it won't work. Um, you should be able to get have access to this book in the library at NJIT. Um, you should also be able to buy copies in the bookstore, buy used copies in the bookstore. You can also find used copies on Amazon. They're pretty cheap, like 30 bucks, something like that. Uh, so uh, it shouldn't be too difficult to get access to this book. You won't need it until the second week of the course uh, for lesson two. So if you don't have it for the first lesson, that's okay. But you will need it for the quizzes in lesson two. Uh, previous editions of this book, book will not work, uh, so please get the fourth edition. Um, so there's the uh, regular assignments on Friday. Uh -huh. There's no quiz for lesson one. Um, instead for lesson one, I'm asking that you uh, post a short introduction in the introductions thread in the lesson one uh, discussion forum, um, and also to set your Moodle avatar. Um, to some picture other than the default. It doesn't have to be a picture of your face. If you want to have something else as your avatar, that's fine. Uh, just something that I can recognize you as you post in the discussion forums. Um, so lesson one, there's no quiz. The introduction in your avatar counts as your quiz credit. Um, in lessons 10 and 11, instead of your regular uh, post on the material, I'm asking that you do an independent research project. This project will extend over lessons 10 and 11. Um, it's a single project. Um, you're going to do a single report on some uh, historical case study of, uh, of relevance to engineering ethics. Um, I'll go over the details of that project as we get closer to lessons 10 and 11. Um, in these weeks, you won't have a quiz. Um, instead, I'm going to ask you, I'm, this should be a formal research project, so you're going to have scholarly sources, and I'm asking you to do an annotated bibliography. Um, and again, details of that as we get closer to lessons 10 and 11. Um, in the final week of the course, um, there will be uh, requirements to do a what did you learn post. There, there won't be any new material. I won't be lecturing on any new material. Uh, just to sort of wrap up, what did you learn post? Um, there's no additional readings. Um, there's no replies required for Lesson 15. Um, there will be a short survey for a uh, uh, experiment we're, we're helping with in class that will also be due in Lesson 15. But apart from that, there will be no finals for the course, uh, no midterm for the course. The research project sort of counts as a midterm, but it's all on the same schedule as the other assignments. Um, uh, okay, so let me go ahead and give a little more detail on the assignments themselves. So first, uh, the quizzes. Again, these are due on Fridays at midnight, uh, going into Saturday, so Friday at 11.59 p.m., um, Saturday at 12 o'clock a.m. It's late. Um, there are two kinds of quizzes that we'll be doing. One of them are what I'm calling reading quizzes. Reading quizzes tend to be multiple choice, uh, like five multiple choice questions. Um, they should be pretty simple. Um, I'm not asking trick questions, and I'm not really asking for a comprehension or mastery of the material, what I'm really just checking is that you opened some of the readings and you looked at uh, the, the readings. So um, this will only cover required readings. Um, when we get into the lessons, you'll see that some of them are labeled required readings and some of them are labeled optional readings. And the only difference between required and optional readings is that the required readings uh, might appear on the quiz. The optional readings will not. 
Um, you can write posts on either the required or the optional readings. It, you don't have to write posts on the re on, on the required readings, um, but th that's to just indicate what, what might be on a quiz. Um, the quizzes also have no time uh, limits, so you can open the quiz, answer some of the questions, uh, save the quiz, and then come back to it later and answer other questions. Um, you can do the readings while you have the quiz open right next to you, so you can answer questions as they come up. Um, the, uh, again, the goal here is just to have you open up the, the readings and look through them. So use Control F to find the answers. Um, uh, uh, you know, actually, maybe here I will go into uh, the lesson one slides uh, just to give you a hint at what this looks like. So here's the lesson one slides. Uh, the very first slide for lesson one shows you. Um, the lesson plan where I have some theme and then I have required readings and optional readings. Um, notice that this is a lot of material. There's a couple of full papers. This is a book. Um, there's a couple of videos, um, a couple of interactive websites. Um, it's a lot of material. It is far too much material for you to go through all of it or you, for you to master all of it in a week. Um, and I don't expect you to do that. So you should not look at this. Uh, please do not be overwhelmed by this material. Uh, you shouldn't have to go through all of it. Uh, uh, I'm not requiring that you go through all of it. Um, the reason I have so much material is because there's a lot of students taking this course and I don't want everyone to write the same, same essay on the same topic. So what you should do is you should go through this material, um, sort of skim the readings in order to get a sense of what's in those readings and what's, in the, uh, uh, and what's going on with the lesson theme. Watch the lecture to figure out how the lesson theme ties into these readings. And then find the thing that you're most interested in uh, it might be one of the read, you know, maybe a quote from one of the readings that you want to talk about more. It might be some aspect of the lesson theme that's reflected in many of the uh, readings. Uh, but the idea is for you to key in on something that you're really interested in uh, that you want to write about for 500 words. Um, you will write better essays if you're interested in what you're writing on. Uh, so find those things. Um, only look at the required readings for the quiz. Um, otherwise, uh, um, the quiz is just there to make you open up the assignments. Now, um, in addition to the reading quizzes, um, later on in the semester I'm going to have you do some case studies. Um, in some cases I'll give you a case study to analyze and you'll have to do a little analyst, uh, analysis uh, which will be like a, a paragraph or so um, about the size of a, a normal post. Um, uh, for two sections this semester, for section 003 which is the live section and for section 455 which is one of my online sections, um, uh, there's a special website called the class website that you will use for quizzes 6 through 9. Um, and this will be a special assignment where you're creating a case study of your own um, and then reading each other's case studies to give analysis. Um, for these two sections, um, I will give you details in Moodle for how to complete this assignment. Um, this is using software that I'm testing with Professor, professor uh, Michael Bieber, who's one of the emeritus professors here at NJIT. Um, and in order to do this testing, we're uh, also having a control group. So the other section uh, that I'm teaching is section 451. And 451 will not be using the class website. Um, they will continue doing regular reading quizzes and case studies, uh, just oh, entirely on Moodle. Um, and then we will do, in lesson 14, there's going to be a, a special uh, quiz that all sections will take um, in order to compare the results. So uh, if you're in these two sections, look out for the class website about uh, in section 6 through 9. Um, otherwise, everything will be on Moodle. Um, one more thing about quizzes before I go on. Uh, uh, quizzes, um, it's important that you take the quizzes uh, during the week of the lesson. Um, so uh, the deadline for quizzes is a hard deadline. And after that deadline, no late quizzes will be accepted. So uh, if you miss that deadline, if it's after 11.59 PM and you forgot to turn submit your quiz, um, then it just won't be accepted. You don't get any credit. Um, and there's no making up late quizzes. So once that uh, deadline is passed, that credit is no longer available. Now, if uh, you uh, are worried about a deadline coming up, um, I make the, all the assignments available at least two weeks in advance of their deadlines. So you should have plenty of time in advance to do these quizzes. So if you're worried about not having time um, uh, near the deadline, uh, please complete these quizzes in advance. Um, you should have access to the quizzes well in advance. Um, quizzes are worth 20 points a lesson. Each lesson is worth 100 points and quizzes are worth 20% of that credit. Uh, the other 80% uh, comes from the discussion forum where you're writing the essay. Um, uh, again, it should be around a 500 word essay, which is about a page and a half or so. 
uh, of type double spaced text in a standard word editor. Um, your basic assignment is to pick some issue from the readings relating to the course themes or addressing uh, uh, issues raised in the lecture. Um, any issue that grasps your, you know, that grabs your attention and makes you, compels you to write about it for 500 words um, is fine. Um, as long as you tie it in clearly to the course themes, um, uh, as long as it's on topic, um, your essay can be on anything that you're motivated to write on. Uh, again, these essays are due on Friday at midnight in the discussion forum, and uh, of the 100 points of the lesson, this is worth, this essay is worth half of that grade, 50 points. Um, again, this, the post is due on Friday, and then the replies are due the following Tuesday. So your lesson one post is due this Friday, and then your uh, lesson one replies are due the following Tuesday. Um, your replies should be 150 words or so, about a paragraph length. I'm not too much of a stickler on the exact word count, but it should be at least 150 words. Um, if it's too uh, far below this word count, uh, you might lose points from the maximum. Um, these replies are each worth 15 points, um, so you have two replies due per lesson, so that's 30 points a lesson. Uh, so in the discussion forum, your total grade is worth 80 points, and then another 20 points for the quiz, um, uh, making 100 points per lesson. Um, you can leave replies uh, to other students in your own thread, but remember that the point of these assignments is to engage other people's views, so you shouldn't only be replying to other students in your own thread. Um, you should make as much effort as possible to read other students' essays and reply to other students. Um, yeah, and as I said, um, each lesson is worth 100 points, 50 points for the post, 30 points for the total for replies, 50 points each, um, and then 20 points for the quiz. Um, lessons 10 and 11, which are your research projects, are a little bit different. Um, in this case, your post which is your research essay, is worth 100 points, or double, a normal lesson. Um, you still have to do replies as the normal uh, requirement, and your point, uh, I'm sorry, your quiz in these lessons is replaced with your with your annotated bibliography. So lessons 10 and 11 are worth 150 points total instead of just 100 points. Um, and that makes the full course uh, out of 1,600 points total, 13 regular lessons and two uh, research project lessons. Out of 1,600 points, here's the grade scale. Um, you can always check what grade you are or what grade you're uh, approximating by adding up all your score and seeing where you where you fall. Um, and you can estimate, you know, if we're in le if we're in lesson six, then we've had 600 points or there's 600 points that have been made available, and you can figure out what your grade scale is uh, relative to that. Um, let me say a little bit about grading policy. So uh, my uh, the policy is a little bit. Um, Arcane, there's uh, maybe a little bit complicated. So I want to first just say a little bit about the concept or the idea behind the grading policy, um, and then I'll explain the policy itself. Uh, and my idea here is that it should be fairly easy to pass the class. If you do the basic work, you should be able to pass the class. But getting an A in the class should take a little more than just the minimum requirements. right? So uh, it should, the class shouldn't be so hard to pass if you do the minimum requirements, but uh, you're going to need to go a little bit beyond the minimum requirements in order to get an A. Right, so A means excellent effort and not just minimum effort. Um, and what I mean by excellent effort here is really about uh, how much engagement you have with the course, with the course material, with your fellow students in the discussion forums, and so on. Right, so if your essays, um, if your replies show thoughtful engagement, uh, thoughtful consideration of the material, if they show independent research, if they show serious contemplation um, with the material, uh, with the lesson themes, um, if you're drawing connections across readings within a lesson, if you're drawing connections across lessons, um, if you're uh, bringing in independent research, uh, maybe topical research or timely research or, uh, from news, um, if if it, if your work demonstrates that you're actually putting uh, effort into your uh, uh, activities, and uh, as I say on Moodle, um, you should expect to be spending about five hours a week on the work for this class. Um, that's watching the videos, that's writing your essay, that's reading all the material, that's responding to other students, um, at least five hours per week. So if you're spending le significantly less than five hours per week, you're probably not doing enough work, and that should show up in your grades. Um, if you're spending about five hours, um, that should also show up in your uh, essays, it should show up in your, in your work, and it should be reflected in your grades. Um, show me sincere engagement, show me that you're thinking critically, not just that you're criticizing other students' work, but you're, that you're thinking critically about your own values, your own background, your own experiences. Um, show me that your, your capacity to engage in constructive dialogue with each other. Um, show me that you're taking advantage of the opportunity presented in this class.
Okay, so that's the theory. Um, here's the actual policy. The idea is that if you do the minimum requirements, you get the default grade of 40 points out of 50 for your essay, which is 80%. 40 out of 50 is 80%. So you don't automatically get 100% by just doing the minimum. Um, you get 40, or you get 80%. You get 40 out of 50 points. And then the idea of, is that you raise or lower your grade from that default, depending on the quality of work you do. Right. So if you meet the minimum requirements, it means you wrote uh, an essay on the topic. Um, that's good. Um, if you show in that essay that you've deeply engaged in material, you've done independent research and so on, then maybe you uh, gain points from 40. Um, but you might also lose points from 40 if you're showing sort of superficial engagement, if you're sort of writing off the top of your, he of your head, and it like if there's a lot of grammatical errors and spelling errors in your essay because it sh it's clear that you didn't take time to do any editing, um, these are the kinds of things that might result in points being taken off. Um, if you're just stating opinions without any sort of critical reflection or argument, um, if you're only responding to one reading instead of like multiple readings, or these are things that might um, result in uh, uh, lower grades. Um, also, failing, failing to cite your sources. Um, right, these are all things that might result in lower grades in your essay. Um, I will say though that the biggest reason that people lose points and the absolute uh, uh, top reason that people get less than an A in this class is simply because they don't turn in assignments. Either they don't turn them in at all, or they don't turn them in on time. Um, and I have a fairly strict late policy to make sure that you turn them in on time. So if you're constantly turning in assignments late, then this is going to negatively affect your grade pretty strongly. Um, one more thing about the grading policy. Um, we're talking in a discussion forum online, um, and it's easy. It's uh, sometimes easy to slip into your online troll uh, voice. Um, where you're sort of very dismissive or critical or even insulting of other people. Um, so please remember that this is a professional classroom environment um, that you should be acting the way that you would act in a normal classroom uh, on the discussion forum. Uh, so harassment, bullying, um, other kinds of inappropriate remarks uh, should not be accepted. Uh, please, um, please uh, get into arguments, uh, respectful arguments with each other. Um, please feel free to disagree respectfully with each other. Um, I don't uh, want or expect the class to have uh, completely identical opinions. Um, I, I think there is some uh, room for disagreement uh, among um, uh, among peers, and I think that uh, in this class, I, I, I want to give you the opportunity to state differing views and to hear uh, a diversity of views, and not just to repeat uh, what I or anyone else thinks. Um, so, so please have discussions, but do them respectfully. Um, we can have disagreements without insulting each other or harassing or bullying each other. Um, so please uh, uh, keep it appropriate. My own uh, test for this is how would I feel if the dean were, were reading what I'm writing. Um, you know, sometimes I might get into a, an argument where I get really impassioned, um, but before I hit submit, I always look at it again and say, okay, um, th maybe this is how I feel, but what, how would the dean feel if they were reading this? And if I think that the dean reading it would be just fine, and I feel like I could completely defend what I'm saying in front of the dean, um, then I'll go ahead and hit submit. Uh, but if I think, uh, you know, if the dean saw this, I would probably be embarrassed, and I would probably have to apologize and this kind of stuff. Well, then maybe I'm not going to I'm not going to post that. So this is uh, think the same thing yourself. Uh, try to control and uh, exercise some self uh, constraints here. Um, okay. So with that said, uh, here's the basic grading rubric. I'm not going to go through this in detail. Um, I've already said too much in this video, uh, right? But the idea is that um, an A-level post uh, is earning between 45 and 50 points. Um, if you're if you, if you earned like a 40 48 on your uh, post, and by the way, you can see your grade uh, underneath each of your posts and replies. There's a little rating, and that's your grade for that post or reply. And so you can see your specific grades, and then you can see your full grades on Moodle. Um, if you're getting between a 45 and a 50, um, this is an A post. You're doing well. Um, this means that you're offering. Uh, deep engagement with the material with uh, your other students and so on. Um, if you're getting between a 35 and a 44, um, this is a B-level post. Um, here I think you're meeting the minimum requirements, that you're doing the minimum work required, but you're not really going above and beyond to earn that A. Um, a typical C-level post is doing below the minimum requirements. Um, you're below the word count. Um, you're not, you, maybe you're only engaged with one source and it's pretty superficial. Um, you're uh, mostly offering trite uh, sort of cliche uh, wisdom, you're mostly appealing to movies or other popular culture without really deep engagement with any of the uh, literature that we're reading uh, or any doing any outside research. Um, the other big reason to get a C is if you're late. So late posts cannot earn more than 35 points 
uh, other posts, uh, late posts will have a maximum of a C grade. Um, F posts getting less than a 20, 24, uh, 5, getting 24 or less, um, are students who did very little effort. Um, this is sort of typically uh, last minute rushed. They just wrote a paragraph and hit submit. Um, and that tends to get very low grades. Um, most students are getting in the A or C range, and C students are mostly posting late uh, or uh, failing to meet the minimum requirements. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about the late policy. Uh, I mentioned it a couple of times. So uh, again, the late uh, quizzes will not be accepted. Um, but I do accept late posts and replies, which is the other big part of your grade. Um, and I accept late posts and replies for one week after the due date. So if you miss the due date, you can continue to write a post and submit a post for up to one week um, after that due date. Um, for one week after the due date, there's a late penalty period where you can earn reduced credit. So if you miss the post due on Friday, you can post that same post up until the next Friday for 35, for a maximum of 35 out of 50 points. Right, this is like a maximum of a C grade. Um, uh, similarly, with replies, you can post for up to a week after the deadline for 10 out of 15 points, which is, again, like a C grade. Um, and you can do this for up to a week after the deadline. After that week is up, no late post or replies are accepted. Um, so uh, if you miss a bunch of posts or replies early in the semester and then it's at the very end of the semester, uh, don't go back and do a bunch of the old material, uh, complete a bunch of your old assignments, because they won't earn any credit. Uh, it doesn't matter how much work you do. Um, it needs to be uh, submitted during this period, either before the deadline or during this late penalty period. Um, there are exceptions. Uh, if there's an event that you know is coming up that's going to uh, disrupt your ability to do work, like for instance, if there's like a business conference that you're traveling to, um, if there's a wedding or some other event that you know that's coming up ahead of time and you need an extension for some assignment, uh, you can go and ask for an extension in advance. Um, please ask well in advance for these kinds of events. You know that they're coming uh, weeks or months ahead of time. So go ahead and ask for an extension at least 48 hours before the event occurs. Um, I will not give an extension the day of or the day before a deadline. So if you know something like this is coming, please let me know ahead of time. Um, students uh, in uh, National Reserve, for instance, know that they have reserve duty coming up uh, well in advance. And so just, just let me know that this is happening and that you're not going to be able to make a deadline. Um, and if you tell me in advance, I'll go ahead and waive those penalties. Um, there are also cases of legitimate emergencies. Uh, for some reason, you have to go to the hospital, or there's a death in the family, and this kind of thing. So in these cases, uh, again, this is understandable. Things happen, um, and I want to make accommodations. And my policy is that you have to clear your emergency with the dean of students. Um, show them medical records or uh, uh, other proof of your uh, situation. Um, they can assess these issues confidentially, um, and they'll let me know uh, if they uh, see a legitimate excuse, they'll send me an email f uh, explaining what days uh, you require an excuse. Um, the reason I do this is because if there's an excuse that requires, if there's some kind of emergency situation that requires uh, late work for my class, it's very likely this will impact your other classes also. The dean of students can verify this information uh, for you in a way uh, that coordinates with all of your classes to help you out. Um, so if there's this kind of emergency, uh, please let the dean of students know, um, and then uh, I'll hear from the dean of students and uh, uh, waive any late penalties that might have been applied. Um, apart from legitimate excuses cleared by the name of students and extensions cleared ahead of time, no late work will be accepted. Uh, so again, once that late penalty period is over, if you don't have a legitimate excuse, um, you don't get that, that credits uh, out of bounds. Um, if you need other kinds of accommodations uh, for whatever issue uh, you might have, uh, please come talk to me and we can make arrangements. I want to make the class as accessible as possible to students uh, with uh, s uh, different kinds of special needs. Uh, so I, I, I want to be flex as flexible as possible. Uh, and not just for students with special needs, a lot of students take this class online uh, in order to fit around uh, work schedule or other schedules issues they have. So I, I want to be flexible, um, but just come talk to me about these issues, uh, any issues you have. Um, here, here's some uh, uh, little word of warning about citations. Um, uh, the, the point of citations is for the people reading your work to be able to track down uh, the work that you did in preparing your material. So uh, make sure that your citations allow readers to find where you got your work from. Um, so any work that is not your own should be cited. Um, if you're citing work from the lesson readings, in other words, material that I've prepared and made available to you, 
Um, then you can cite that by just mentioning the author and the page number, um, because the set of uh, material that I'm providing is is fairly small. Um, the author and page number should be sufficient to go back to that material. Um, if it's any material, uh, any of the material should have some kind of citation, at the very least a URL that links, right, so if, if there's some news item that you want to share that's related to your essay, um, just, you know, put a little footnote at the bottom and say that you got this from this website and then uh, give a URL that links to that website. That way I can track down the source and I can look at where you're getting your information. A URL should be sufficient for anything online. If it's something that's not online, if it's like a book or an encyclopedia that you have um, in, your, in your home, um, then make sure you give a full citation. Uh, I prefer APA style citations. Um, APA style, the important thing is that you have the author, the year, the title, and the publisher. So make sure that that information is available uh, of any citations you use. Um, I will require full bibliographies for the research project in, week, in weeks 10 and 11. Um, and again, I'll say more about that when that assignment comes up. But, uh, but this should be enough to get your citations going. Uh, please cite any work that's not your own. Um, another thing to say here um, is that failure to do proper citations counts as plagiarism. And this is an ethics class, so I have a pretty strict plagiarism policy. Um, plagiarism, uh, as defined by the NJIT Student Code of Conduct, um, is any attempt to present material that is not your own work as your own. Um, it's also uh, trying to use uh, material... Uh, 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 in, in, in ways that avoids doing work. So um, one common form of plagiarism in this class, you have two replies to do for every week. Um, st some students get the bright idea of writing only one reply and copying that same reply twice into different forms since they uh, might as well work as res responses to both posts. Um, if I find that you do this, um, this counts as plagiarism, you get zero credit for all those assignments um, for both replies um, as, for as long as that's been going on. Uh, sometimes I don't catch this until week 15. Um, but if, if you keep doing it every lesson, you're going to get zero credit for all those replies and you won't get a chance to make up that work. Um, be careful of paraphrasing. Um, don't ask to see another student's essay. Um, don't ask to... Uh, when you're writing your essay, don't be looking at one of your sources sort of line by line and just try to paraphrase um, line by line from another source. Um, your essay should be written entirely from your own head, which means you do all the reading, you do all the research, and then you put all that reading aside and you try to think and synthesize, synthesize all that material into your own original thoughts. Right? Um, if you're writing your essay with another essay open right next to you and you're going line by line, um, that's uh, plagiarism and it'll get, it, it'll get caught and given zero credit. So my policy is that plagiarized material gets zero credit. Um, if it's particularly egregious, if it's uh, plagiarism that's occurring again and again, um, or if it's uh, something insulting like you're just copying directly from Wikipedia, where you're like leaving the hyperlinks to other Wikipedia pages in the original, in the copy and paste, um, this kind of stuff uh, is egregious plagiarism, and I tend to refer that to the dean of students. Uh, the dean of students will typically fail the student fr uh, from the course. Uh, if not, uh, expel them outright. Um, the maximum penalty for plagiarism, according to the NJIT policy, is expulsion. So uh, this is a serious offense, and I take it seriously. Um, in addition to uh, earning zero credit for any plagiarized material, um, if you are caught plagiarizing on any assignment, you also forfeit any extra credit you've earned for the rest of the semester. So uh, um, this is to ensure that um, students can't make up for uh, plagiarism uh, with extra credit. If you are caught plagiarizing, then you don't get to earn any extra credit. Uh, you only, uh, your grade will depend entirely on the um, material, the actual core assignment material that you've submitted. So uh, hopefully that's enough penalty to uh, discourage any kind of plagiarism in this class. Um, and I uh, fail about five or six students every semester uh, for plagiarism. So I expect to do the same this semester, um, and I won't hesitate to do so. Please, please don't plagiarize in my ethics class. I mentioned extra credit in the last slide. Um, so uh, there is extra credit in this class. There's two kinds of extra credit. Um, one is attendance credit. Uh, the attendance credit uh, works like this. Um, in every lecture, um, I will have a secret word. Um, the secret word is written in the slides, slide deck for that lecture. Um, I sometimes say the secret word in the videos. And let me be very clear that the videos uh, 
our, a lot of the videos were recorded last semester and I changed the secret words this semester. Um, I updated the slides, so the slides should all be accurate, but the videos are not accurate. So don't look for the secret words in the videos, look for the secret words in the slides. Um, those secret words will be submitted to Moodle, let me show you where. So if you go into the engineering ethics page, at the very top, right next to the syllabus is this attendance credit. So if you click on the attendance credit, um, every Friday uh, for uh, uh, between 12 a.m. and 11.55 p.m., so all day on Friday, um, you can submit the lecture word for that week um, as attendance credit. Um, if you're in one of the online sections, that lecture word uh, submitted on Friday will give you five points for that lesson. Um, you can earn, there's 15 lessons, so there's a maximum of 75 attendance credit, extra credit points that you can earn over the semester. Um, and all you have to do is find that secret word in the lecture slides and submit it as the password for the attendance assignment um, every Friday. Uh, passwords are case sensitive, so be careful about that. If you submit the wrong word, or if you f fail to submit the correct word, um, you just don't get that credit. Um, I don't let you make up uh, the assignment for uh, uh, getting this wrong. Uh, since it's extra credit, you're not losing any credit by not doing this. Um, you can only gain credit this way. Uh, this, so that's for the online students. Online students only have to do this once per week. Um, if you're in the live section, if you're in section uh, 003, um, then I'm going to have actually three lecture wor uh, three attendance words, um, one on Friday that's in the lecture slides, just like the online sections, and then I'll give two additional words that you have to um, give during the class section uh, on Mondays and Wednesdays when the class actually meets. Um, again, this is still extra credit, so you technically don't have to come to class. If you miss all the classes, um, you're still going to uh, earn the normal score of 1,600 points. Um, you just don't get any of this extra credit. Uh, but I, I want to encourage students to come to class, so uh, my policy this semester is that you will continue to earn extra credit for attendance uh, by coming to the live sections until you hit three unexcused absences. Once you hit three unexcused absences, then your, your uh, continued capacity to earn extra credit uh, stops. So you'll, you'll retain any extra credit you earned until then, but after, that, after three unexcused absences, you don't earn any more extra credit. So you don't... Uh, it's not whenever you show up, you have to sort of show up regularly to continue earning extra credit. Now, um, if you're not earning extra credit, you're still welcome to show up to class. Uh, please show up to class and, and participate in discussions. But I want to give uh, the most extra credit to the students who show up regularly. So that's, that's the idea here. Um, again, uh, for the students in the live sections, the lecture word and the two additional class sections will total up to five points. So all sections have a, have a maximum of 75 points of extra credit attendance credit uh, they can earn. Um, in addition to the attendance credit, there's also two essay opportunities uh, at various points of the semester. One due at the end of November and one due at the end of the semester in December. Um, those extra credit essays are each worth 20 points, so that's 40 points max. Uh, basically, each essay will make up for a, a missing quiz um, if you need it. So that's that ends up being a lot of extra credit points that you could potentially earn. Uh, and for this reason, I don't feel too bad grading the assignment's pretty strictly, and for having that uh, strong late penalty. Um, uh, I went through the entire syllabus now, uh, and these are the updated policies for fall 2018. I hope everything makes sense. I hope uh, you're, you feel prepared to start engaging in the course. Uh, lessons 1 and 2 are up online right now, so get going. Um, please let me know if you have any uh, questions, um, either by email or I would actually prefer if you ask questions um, if, if it's not a sensitive uh, private question, if you can ask it in the discussion forum, open threads. Um, actually, let me go here into Moodle. Uh, in the discussion forums, uh, every lesson... So, okay, so uh, here's Moodle. I haven't really gone to Moodle. Um, there's all, lessons are up, and at the bottom of the lesson, there's the discussion forum. In the discussion forum, uh, you will see everyone else's posts, and you can add your own post uh, here. Um, if you actually go into the advanced editor, you can do some fancy HTML stuff if you want to add uh, pictures. Let me, let me get myself out of the way here. If you want to add pictures or whatever, um, you can do some fancy HTML editing. But you want to add a new discussion uh -huh, to every forum with your essay, just as these students have done. Um, but in addition to your essay, posting your essay here, um, in lesson one, you're also posting an introduction in the introduction thread. Uh, but in addition to all this, I have an open thread that I'll post er for every lesson. And this is really to like ask any questions that you have. Um, it's to uh, let me know of any broken links in the syllabus. 
Um, if there's news items relevant to the lesson, I sometimes share them here, and you should feel free to share them yourself. Um, sometimes I'll grade the material that gets posted in the open thread, but it's uh, sort of at my discretion. If I think it's a contribution or if I think it's just a question, it might not get a grade. Um, so feel free to post in the open thread any questions that you have. In fact, I prefer it to be in the open thread so that way other students can benefit from uh, the answers to the questions. Uh, I think that's everything. Uh, I, this video is already pretty long, so uh, thank you for listening. I hope uh, you are prepared to start engaging. Uh, welcome to Engineering Ethics, uh, and I look forward to working with you this semester. Um, bye.